Hey everyone, let me make sure I'm live. Well, I think, let me make sure I can hear myself. Um, I can hear myself. Perfect. This usually takes a second. Um, all right. Let me take my headphones off. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Kaggle study group. Um, so if if you're new to the streams, what I what we do here is I live stream every week where we go through top Kaggle solutions. And the end goal here is to learn uh, tricks from the top teams and basically figure out what they did or certain ways that we can take away from them and apply them to any new competition or our pipelines. So thanks for this week as well. Um, we are going through the US patent phrase to phrase matching competition. And um, I'll mention one thing. So I had interviewed the 10th position uh, solution from this competition. And uh, this was Trushant from at the time H2. He was, he was a part of the H2 team at that point. Um, and he's, I, I think he's, very close to becoming a grandmaster now. Um, we also had Guanshu who's not shared his solution, so I don't think I'll be able to, to talk about that. Um, but you can watch that interview there. I asked a lot of stupid questions like, why did you do this? Why did you use this approach? Uh, why did you try this approach? How did you come up with the magic that was there in this competition? For uh, this one, for this live stream, I'll try to do a rush through the top solutions because only five of them have been shared and there's uh what my, my focus is uh just going to be briefly mentioned the magic so there was a magic that the team found which really boosted their score and after that we'll try to understand what was the secret sauce between the top teams so usually uh these are an hour long this might might be shorter uh shout out to ayush who's, who's missing the world cup to watch this Hey Aditya, thanks. Thanks for joining. Um, all right. Uh, so I'll quickly mention the premise of this competition. So it's it's to identify similar phrases in US patterns, and the logic. As I said, it's it's the first link in the description. But uh, Trushant had shared the logic behind this. So if you're filing for a patent, there's a lot of legal jargon. And most humans only care about the legal contract where the, when they're being hired and they tend not to read stuff outside of that. But the goal, I assume, is to like help automate that process. So if you're filing for a patent, now this competition really focuses on freezes. But if you're filing for a patent, uh, you would ideally like to have an automated system that can figure out if this patent already exists. So you can't like basically throw in a lot of weird jargon there and move your way around the system. So the end goal is to figure out if the patent you're filing for already exists. And that's that's what we're going to help with. Or we were supposed to help with uh, with this competition. It's ended now. So we're just, we're just here to understand the top solutions. They talk about uh, can you extract meaning from a large text-based uh, data set derived from inventions? Here's your chance to do so. They talk about where the data set comes from, all those things. If you look inside the data set, you are presented pairs of phrases and anchor and a target phrase. And you are asked to rate how similar they are from a scale of zero to one. Zero being not similar, one being extremely, one being identical in meaning. Uh, they talk about how this challenge differs from a semantic uh, similarity task. And here the context is also relevant. Uh, that is the key bit. And that was also a part of uh, the secret sauce. The scores are in one, two, three, four, five, the following five brackets. And they mean different things, but uh, for it's, it's safe to say you're trying to come up with the score and figure out how similar are these phrases against each other. So inside the data set, you had your IDs, you had your anchor and target, which was the first and second phrase. And then you had the context, which indicates the subject 
within which they are uh, within which the similarities to be scored and then you had the score so score was what you were predicting and that was between these two under the context after this i'd, I'd like to go through a few um, eda notebooks to glance over the data set as well so we we're, we're using gabi's gabriel preda uh, we we call him gabi inside the kaggle community i'll i'll use his eda kernel to highlight some facts and after that i'll also use another one by remick if i remember correctly so remick uh, he also writes absolutely awesome kernels and i think he's is close to he's is working his way to a competition grandmaster he became 2x grandmaster really fast and now he's on his way to a competition gm but uh about the hierarchy of the data i wanted to use this visualization from remix kernel so you can see that this is a hierarchy where you have these sections which uh range from letter a to h and also y and inside that you have class which contains two digits within which you have the subclass and then the main group and subgroups so this is the hierarchy and uh here are the letters what they mean so a refers to human necessities and a class symbol like a01 represents agriculture forestry all those things so as you're working through these legal documents you're supposed to figure out if the words or the phrases are similar b means operations and transport c is chemistry and metallurgy why am i highlighting this the thing to remember or the thing worth pointing out here is when you training these backbones deborta large roberta large electra bert they usually aren't trained on data set that has a lot of chemistry jargon in there right or electronics or maybe human necessities might be present i would imagine so tushan pointed this out that chemistry was a hard one physics was also a hard one others were relatively okay so you had to figure out how to work with these and this was the hierarchy as i mentioned so let's uh, go back to gabriel's kernel and swift through the analysis so as you can see uh, he prints out the heads and we can see the ids are simply numbers here or strings actually then you have the anchor which in this case is in abatement and the target is abatement of pollution you given the context and then you given the score and similarly for test you can see that you given the anchor target and context and you supposed to predict the score for this case and how do you predict that you have the ids and you give out the score so you have 36000 examples to work with and uh, inside the test set which i assume would be later rerun you have 36 examples which later gets rerun how are these scored uh, i glanced over that so let me go back to that pearson correlation coefficient is used to predict uh, between the predicted and actual similarity scores so that's how uh, your submissions are evaluated and if you look at the leaderboard the best score achieved was higher is better so the best uh, score achieved was 0.878 and the gold range hovered from 0.87 up until here the thing worth pointing out is that there is a nice jump in the sense that usually you don't see such gaps on leaderboards which means that there was some magic and uh, we'll also look at the magic and how did the teams arrive at that but that's one thing to remember for now so coming back to the eda uh, gabriel shows that there is no missing data at all and uh, he shows the unique data inside uh, the training set so the anchors are 2% unique target is 80% unique uh, same for other values and then he prints out which anchor phrases have the most of target candidates so the anchors are something like component combos composite coating i would imagine this is either from chemistry or physics right like it it could be a part of a battery which would be physics or electricity maybe sounds like chemistry um this definitely would be something from chemistry i would imagine um 
Yep. So you have all of these anchors like so. And then he plots the distribution of anchors with certain number of targets. You have also the anchor phrases that only have one target. So um, this looks like biology to me. And I would imagine this is either from physics or electricity. Um, as you can see, these are the phrases you are working with. And as for a human, I, you, you probably won't be able to manually label these. Uh, is there any target that appears as well as an anchor? And I think the answer was no to this. So here's a word cloud of all of these. And you can pause and look at this. I'll, I'll uh, scroll. I'll keep scrolling. I've, I've read through these. Nothing stood out to me. Um, after this, there was some more distribution of word count and character count. So you can see that the anchor character count and target character count is just slightly ever so off. And both of them peak around... 20 and same for the anchor and target word count. How many contexts and how many anchors uh, have unique contexts? So there are 106 uh, unique contexts. And let's see if there's anything else. So there are a few more distributions plotted, uh, but we've learned that there is roughly the same number of characters and words in both the anchors and targets. And they follow a somewhat similar distribution. So that's one thing to remember. Let's see if uh, Remek has anything else that I might want to point out. Remek had printed out um, the target uh, and both the anchors as well. So it might be worth to read through these if you'd like. So you can see there's Composition, there's data, metal, all of these words occur. And you can see a word cloud of it as well. And then you can see the target length uh, as well. Targets are a maximum of 11 words in length is the observation from here. And that is quite clearly like from chemistry as you can see. This is the only time I've ever found my chemistry knowledge from high school to be relevant, <laughs> surprisingly. Like I, I never understood why I studied that subject, but now I know. It was it was for this moment. My entire life was leading me up to this. Uh, this also looks like chemistry, I would say. So I'm just trying to make those predictions myself. And as you can see, like I am mildly confused myself. Gearbox has two clutches, but no clutch pedal. Um, I can't imagine a gearbox like this, but it's this clearly is from something that includes mechanics or machinery. So as you can see, like I'm sure about the obvious examples, but for the other ones, it can be confusing. And the goal is again to come up with a neural network or ML based approach that can effectively come up with a score to predict these. So I've only already shown the hierarchy. And uh, there are examples of the number of classes and similar things. So there are a few more plots showing the distribution. Uh, I would suggest you, you can scroll through this notebook. It's very elaborate and goes into a lot of details. I just wanted to point all of these details out. And one more thing worth showing is the distribution of targets. So perfect matches are, I think, the least in training data set. So that's the smallest number. So that is the data set and that is the task uh, you were working with or you were supposed to work with. A few more interesting discussions that I found uh, that might be worth highlighting. Devastator had shared this write-up about uh, transformer hyperparameter tips. So he says you should be beware of the default batch size and transformer models are usually sensitive to batch size when you're working with NLP data. He talks about hidden layers after the pre-trained model. So you there, there are different techniques. Uh, you could freeze and unfreeze the layers and work with that. And uh, you need to be smart while you're doing that. So if you add an embedding, uh, they, you have to think about, do you unfreeze the original embedding layer? Do you unfreeze the model you're working with? Or do you just train the head that you've added? Usually you get an uplift uh, after 
unfreezing all the layers and also fine tuning them there are also learning rates and schedulers that affect how fast your model converges so uh, i've shown in the previous video but in hydrogen torch it's really simple to select these i have found most teams have recently been using cosine scheduler and in the video that i mentioned is the first link you can see that hydrogen torch usually also defaults to cosine learning so that makes me believe that it's always a good default go to um he also talks about hyperparameter of optimizers so he says uh, finding weight decay can be tricky and you need to get lucky there or other hyperparameters that are of importance are beta 1 and beta 2 for adam optimizer for adam optimizer the number one rule is to not underestimate the importance of epsilon value and do not overuse gradient clipping norm gradient accumulation sometimes gives subtle benefits and it's worth experimenting um so here he says in overfitting and regularization he suggest using dropout but uh, for feedback competitions one of the trick was to not use dropout so it's it's again experimental um, i somewhat disagree with what they've written i would say it's again experimental and you need to check if it's helping for your particular data set no you don't sound like a broken record devastator i i repeat this in all the live streams so maybe you both are broken records but the ground truth or the only truth is experiments and that's why data science is a science he also talks about using validation uh, sets to choose robust parameters and augmentation i'm going to skip over all of this and then there are some examples of uh, using warm up uh, using distributed training and if you should have mixed precision training most definitely yes so these are some uh, good refreshers about hyperparameters inside transformer transformer models uh, highly recommend this thread it's it's a good refresher on all that for this competition most people started with uh, nakama's deborta v3 large baseline and one thing he says here is he wanted to start with base but then he knew that people would fork and create it as a large baseline so he used large so let's make sure we pay our respects for the upvote to his notebook because his notebooks are always of pristine quality and the code is absolutely a delight to read so most people started the competition with his training and inference baseline both of which he had shared so it also added uh, the cpc data if i understand correctly and in this model in this notebook he showed how to use stratified k fold and deborta v3 large for four epochs uh, was trained in this notebook which gave you 0.85 and 0.83 on the lb on the public lb so let's see how did the teams go from 0.83 to the leaderboard it is 0.87 um there were also some other cool notebooks worth mentioning so this was a really nice uh, refresher as well for all if you look on the right on the table of contents for all things or all parts of the traditional to modern nlp pipeline and uh jeremy howard himself had also shared some very cool kernels in this competition if i remember correctly so if you have the time and if you have more time after watching this live stream definitely check these kernels out as well uh, which are how do you get started with nlp for absolute beginners and how do you iterate like a grandmaster and he basically shows you how to work with nlp and transformers and how to have a nice baseline for this competition uh the upwards tell you how nice these notebooks must be so they are definitely worth checking out so uh now let's move on to the solutions and as i mentioned there was this magic so even cpmp asked in this thread that he he was curious himself how did people find out this magic 
the cool thing for me and why did i mention this thread was it's also almost like amazing to see that all the top teams found the magic independent of each other right so all the all the top teams have shared that they use the magic feature which i'll just mention in a second but it's cool to see that on on kagel all teams somewhat converge on these cool hidden hidden signals which are present inside the data set so what was this hidden si- signal um i think uh, the one of the solutions had uh, really explained this nicely so let me try to remember which one that was without embarrassing myself i think it was the yes uh, the 10th place solution uh, explains it really well so the magic was to group the target words per anchor plus context and then attach them at the end of each sentence and uh, chumajin has very nicely shared the code as well so we'll quickly read through that so you have uh, you create a column called group where you grab the context and add the anchor to that and then you iterate over all the columns which are unique and for them you are joining them with target and finally you add all of these to the input after iterating and uh, creating this map for all the unique columns this was the trick or the secret uh, signal for the for the competition initially uh, most teams didn't figure out that they, they should be attaching this to the end of sentence and they should be grouping like so but most of the top teams somewhat converged on this approach so again it was to group the target words on anchor plus context and then attach them to the end of each sentence so let's start with jazzy's solution and jazzy had solo won this competition he says uh, he had grouped by anchor and stratified by score there were words occurring in both anchor and target and he made sure to put them in the same fold so he made sure that there was no leakage uh, while setting up the cv he shares the neural network model uh, details pearson loss worked best for him and he had five epochs of training by the way i'm i'm i'll scroll a bit further and say he has open sourced his solution and it's very well documented like he has doc strings inside the code so it's it's really good you you can definitely you should definitely check that out um so he trained for five epochs and started with adversarial training from the second epoch for this competitions quite a few teams say that adversarial training was helpful he had grouped by uh, anchor and context and uh, along with targets added this to the output and this he says produced the best model adding this to the input for context 0 helps the ensemble a lot and then he says uh, it's defined like so, so you're basically grabbing the letter from here random shuffle shuffling the targets during each training step was also helpful i i think some other team mentioned this was also helpful for them he had frozen the bert embedding layer for his approach and he had used different learning la- rates for bert and other parts especially when adding lstm he had added a by lstm header which he says helped a lot i some team i think had their name as prompt is all you need <laughs> so that gave him a hint that maybe he doesn't need to find you know change the bert model so he added lstm on top of bert he used the linear attention pooling on top of by lstm before fully connected and he says learning uh, rate matters a lot he had also changed the rnn output dimension uh, into 2 which helped weak models here he shares uh, the models that ended up in his ensemble so on the left you can see the model name this is a cv score the learning rate for the backbone um the scheduler he had used and if he had doubled the rnn dimension and the weight uh, that this was given in the ensemble 
So you can see for all the BERT based models, he had doubled the RNN dimensions. And uh, it's a nice mix of, uh, so for Debolta Large, he had a linear scheduler and for all others, it was a cosine scheduler. And he had used Debolta V3L BERT for patents. I didn't know that's that's a cool model and it's, it's cool that that exists. I didn't know that. That's why we do this live stream so that I can learn with you all. He had used Electra Large uh, Squad F512. Assign Sim CAC Bird for Patent, another variant, I would assume, of Bird for Parents. Patents, sorry. And a funnel transformer. He said it was interesting to see uh, V3L and Electra Large work best. They are both pre trained and use Electra style uh, RTD, not mass, learn, mass language modeling. After this, he talks about the ensemble approach and how he had come up with the weights. I think this was straightforward, so I'll skip through this. So in summary, uh, he had come up with the magic trick. He discovered the magic trick. He added a LSTM to help him get good single model, which was key for the win, because as you can see, it gave him a nice score. Now he's talking about winning a competition. So you need every bit of uh, push you can get for that. Adding the letter, so context zero also brought diverse models for his case. And then you can find his open source solution here on his GitHub repo. Let's see if there's anything worth highlighting from the discussion. Yeah, so when he said uh, he was random shuffling the targets on each training step, there's a question, does it mean that you're creating train batches on the go? and creating shuffle target prefixes. He said, uh, you can just refer to the data set file where he's shuffling the targets in each item. He also explains that LSTM, uh, the intuition behind why LSTM was helpful. Um, and there were some discussions around that, but I think that's that's all I wanted to highlight from here. So that was the winning solution for this competition. Let's check out the second place solution. He spoke about the magic and uh, the keys that there exists strong correlation between different targets under the same anchor. And I assume their team arrived at this by the fact that you can see from the gap between group K fold and K fold. When I was interviewing Tushant, uh, in his interview, he said that they just arrived, arrived at it by a virtue of experiments. So they, they thought their team, he was a part of the team. Uh, the team thought that we could try grouping like this and see if that helps the score. And this was just two days before the deadline. And I assume that they arrived at this by just looking at the leaderboard and figuring out that there is some magic that needs to be uncovered. For the second place, uh, they arrived at this by observing the gap between group K fold and K fold. And this is the reason why I point that out is usually for me, when I settle on a CV strategy, I would just stick to it after I'm happy with it. But for some reason, this team kept looking at the gap or maybe they decided to go back and look at the gap and that can also reveal info. So that's something we learned today. Uh, he says that they'd use various methods to take advantage of the magic. They'd group the targets from the same anchor and added them to the context. Group the targets from the same anchor and context. Group the targets from same anchor and then group the anchors from same context and then add them to the context in turn. For stage two, they say they group the targets from the same anchor, add OOF scores out of old scores to describe more specific info. And then these scores are multiplied by hundred. So these can be recognized as a token. The other approach was also group the targets on the same anchor and context with score. Some details during training, uh, the group is performed inside the train set and the score is derived from out of full score 
from the first stage models during inference the group is performed after concatenating train set and test set and the score is derived from both out of fold predictions and predictions of test set from fourth stage models why concat because uh, there was some overlap in the anchors in both train and test set things that worked for them so again adversarial training was helpful for these guys exponential moving average was also helpful and uh, they also added knowledge distillation to their models some more details about this a uh, soft label from the ensemble oof was used so in this way single models can achieve performance close to ensemble models and they had also uh, shared how did they avoid the leakage for this case so mlm did not work for these guys as well and neither did bc loss or post processing they used deberta v3l uh, bird for patents and deberta large and their inference notebook is open sourced or published on kaggle so you can check that out let's see if there is anything from the discussion all of the solutions were similar so i'm confusing uh, which one had some details in the discussion so there's a question about how did they choose the weights for the ensemble uh, and uh, the comment from the write up is linear regression is much faster than optuna search and the response by the topic author was uh, he wanted to get the weights for best score and linear regression can directly calculate the best coefficient based on least square so instead of using optuna they simply used linear regression I think that's all for the second place solution. Let me catch up on the chart. I don't see any questions related to this, so we can continue from there. Let's uh, go to the third place solution now. So the summary is they all they initially tried to find the additional information in the public data set, uh, but this wasn't really helpful. the essential part of the solution was adding targets with the same anchor to each data sample and this trick gave them a nice boost they stacked 12 different models in the final submission d uh, deberta v3l with msc loss gave the best single model score their validation strategy was both stratified k fold and group k fold which prevented a uh, data with same anchor from leaking to validation states set and they also spoke about how they had set that up here is an example of how they had used the magic trick we've already gone through this they talk about the models so this team also used bird for patent electra large and three deberta models the curious thing for me was they used deberta v1 and v1 xl for loss they had used a binary cross entropy loss mean squared error loss and pearson correlation loss this is a question in the chat so let me catch up on that how to ensemble full train model with k fold model uh this trick is often mentioned i think either you could give a weight to both of these and what many teams have mastered is like they they take their best performing model from a fold and train it on the full data set afterwards so some teams also tend to do that some veterans tend to do that but i would assume you can also add weights between these models and work with that i don't know if that makes sense let me know some tricks shared uh, again adversarial trainings and uh, moving averages were helpful and differential learning rate for each layer was helpful for this team they've uh, shared the scores for all the models and some ideas that they had was trying prompt, prompt learning um i think this came for all of the teams this stemmed from the fact that uh, there was a team having this name uh, on the leaderboard pre trained uh, pre training on the public data set they did not try these approaches 
so in in summary uh, they used the magic trick and they had a nice validation strategy where they made sure there was no leakage apart from that we can see that the backbones are similar except that they also used v1 uh, backbones and they work with two more uh, loss functions so this was the third place solution the fifth one which caused all the chaos if i may uh there is a comment by rashmi so let me share that and this was in an answer to the question how do you ensemble full train model with the k full model uh rashmi as i mentioned in the previous live stream is a veteran on kaggle uh i think all of her teams have been recently gold medaling so we should listen to this uh weights to ensemble different folds usually works however training on full data without any validation gets tricky but i i found that uh veteran especially and like people like philip have figured out how to like do this effectively but they have like a nice intuition of how to like take the best performing model from a fold and train it on the entire data set so like i i don't know how do you learn that but i guess like you validate against the leaderboard in that case or something could i elaborate on fgm and ema sure i can point you to two discussions so uh, fgm i as i understand is referring to awp which is adversarial perturbation i think this was a cool notebook uh there was a discussion by chris if i remember correctly mentioning that no this wasn't it mm, let's see if i can find that real quick um I don't seem to be able to find that. I think the tenth place had shared some code that was helpful. Let's see if I can use that real quick. So they point you to some code, um, but I'll I'll give the summary for AWP or FGM. So the the trick is like adding adversarial examples. That's the very high level uh, overview. so you basically like use this as a regularization approach or an augmentation where you have like some examples that are changed a bit or like add some uh, adversarial training to your model and uh, i don't know if these guys had shared the code or it was someone else but uh, ema basically can be thought of loosely as ensembling or averaging weights across different approaches I don't know if you're happy with that high level overview if not I can like try to find the links after this live stream but I know like there's a very nice discussion somewhere that explains this uh Rashmi says yes uh, she also agrees that people like Sai or uh, Christy would have figured out how to like train the best fold model on the entire data set a uh, comment on awp that it's also very popular on nlp competition and usually takes twice memory and some parameter tweaking thanks for that comment i'm not sure alex if your thanks is that uh, if you're saying okay to finding the write ups or if you're happy with this so let me know uh, the fifth solution is prompt uh, is all you need and uh, prompt learning is used in large language models so stuff like gpt3 and all of those models are trained on that this was such a cool read because it appears that dikw had uh, simply used their winning solution from some other competition and he reformulated the task and applied this approach uh, to the confidence of label words and that basically made him win sorry win a gold medal on this competition let me close the other tab real quick so he shares a simple image of uh, prompt learning here and in the subtext he says in order to enable the model to directly output the similarity he improved the model of the pet paper and pet paper refers to this this was one of the links that i wanted to highlight that was that's why i was like scrolling through the discussion constantly 
but uh, this is pattern exploiting training so that's the name of the paper and the close uh, i assumed it was a spelling mistake no it's not <laughs> the close in this write up actually refers to a technical word from a paper so uh, you can check out this repo if, if you want to learn more about pet so he manually set yes as the label of uh, words with one similarity score and then took out the logits of the model in this word as input and used bce laws to calculate he had made the logits of yes equal to similarity he found that uh, the effect of prompt model was better than the regular model in this case in this case uh they also shared that the finding the trick was helpful in this case uh for their team as well so the main source here was using uh prompt learning along with pet uh i don't think they open source the code so someone had asked them as well and i was trying to find a link i don't think this team had open source the code so that's the fifth place solution the seventh one was a really uh, cool read alex is uh, still typing so i'll I'll let him type and highlight that comment in a second so uh the seventh place uh, i think he had solo gold solo golded is that a word <laughs> so yes he won a solo gold in this competition and he spoke about his approach and what had happened here so this was a third competition for this person and they say they learned a lot in each one for the first one they relied on tuning a notebook while consuming their quota this is worth it please hear hear out their approach and the journey is like quite inspiring for the second one uh, he managed to change the models it was quite a ride for him he said he learned about new stuff about the capabilities of torch for this competition he started with he started in june and he was reviewing write ups of previous competition and then thought that maybe it's too late to join the competition and then it's again the third nlp competition for this person then they took a look at the data compiled some ideas thought they'll give it a try uh, had a base solution still the ceo was pretty low for them and then they compared it against the models there was supposed to be a bump but the score was still low and they there was about like 3 weeks remaining they seriously considered moving on from this competition and uh, around this time they made this first submission and they say usually they would wait for having a solid model before submitting but uh the the learning for them has been no submit as soon as you can on second day uh after submitting he found a bug in his code and fixing that pushed them to silver zone after some more fiddling they found themselves on the gold score and uh is what it is he was overfitting and even on uh, the last few days he says he was getting a nine on validation score that was a big wake up call he decided to redirect the efforts to understanding what had happened and um the assumption was maybe the gold medal might not happen and after fixing that as you can see that this person did get the gold medal so uh, i wanted to share this because it's it's cool to see that many people actually share the journey and it's it's quite an honest version that hey they did start with like fiddling around notebooks and giving up uh, having a bad clb correlation uh, almost giving up fixing that that gave them a bump casually giving up coming back realizing maybe they can get a gold feeling like they don't have a gold uh, then actually getting the gold so it is just doing enough experiments i'm sure uh, 
very smart experiments as well so they speak about encoding for text models text models predict a single score for each text which in this case means one target so for that uh, the following encoding was used anchor with a separator followed by target and context and additional targets the additional targets for the are are targets for the same anchor and context separated by a comma a random permutation capped at size n was used and a par the parameter was set mostly to 0 uh, or 20 I was reading through if uh, this needs to be highlighted. I don't think so. They talk about uh, discarding uh, separators and what was relevant. Encoding for token models. So they'd also use token models. And I, I think there's a model architecture as well. So there were two approaches of encoding for text models and token models. And both are somewhat similar if you pay attention. Like uh, there's a transformer backbone and the models are similar across both of these. Dropout was used, and it was zero uh, if you're skipping a multi-layer perceptron. After that, there was a multi-layer perceptron and the layer sizes have been mentioned. And at the end of it, a head was added. So for text models, attention head was added. And for token models, this was simply passed on. For ensembling, uh, the mean was taken, Optuna was used, linear regression, rigid regression, and LGBM was used. So let's read that in the text. Um, for text, oh, sorry, for token models, uh, token models predict multiple target at once. And for each target, they're generated an encoding using one of the following. The first one is balanced, second one is full, third one is hybrid. So for the balance one, the target, is, target goes first and is followed by one random permutation of the remaining targets. The permutation is cut at max length. For full, uh, the target goes first and is followed by multiple random permutations of the remaining target. These are also cut at max length and not repeated. Hybrid is similar to full. It attempts to maximize the usage of encoding length, but it works roughly like using the sequences target and permutation amongst other targets which are concatenated so you can read through these uh, examples that he's shown uh, it'll make more sense if it did not i'm happy to elaborate if this wasn't clear but as you can see uh, the concatenation or the way at which you combine these was one of the secret sources here for training the data set um, he tried all three options and noticed one and three performed much better. So he quickly discarded two. As for predictions, he expected each model would perform better using the same approach as the training data set. But uh, for some reason, balanced seemed to always perform better. So that sort was adapted. Each encoding provides token predictions for multiple target. And the final prediction for each target is computed by averaging the prediction of its tokens. These are either simple averages, length weighted averages, or score weighted averages. After this, uh, they speak about the architecture, which we've already looked at. So the things worth highlighting are attention head was simply used from the kernel by Nakama. The attention head was masked by target tokens. And uh, the attention head was masked by encoding's attention mask as well. And after this, there was a global averaging pool or GAP. They also speak about how the ensembling approaches were used. And uh, there's quite a lot of details. But I think uh, that's all that's worth highlighting here. So there were two approaches, text models and token models and different approaches for encoding uh, were tried by this person. And they also experimented and uh, through this experimented arrived at which is the best approach for uh, using encoding. And after that, they've also shared what was relevant for using um, 
or ensembling these models together so let's read alex's comment now um you think uh, side he says side as the following he trained the neural net such that the last epoch is the best one and then picks the number of epochs and retrains with all the data i think that makes more sense um maybe i'm confusing but i i think some other all people also tend to uh pick out the best performing model and train that or fine tune that on the entire data set i might be mixing that but i if i remember correctly that's also a common approach but thanks thanks for that alex uh santosh is asking how is the cv score calculated for the same so for uh, the approach that alex says i think um for all data yeah that that would be tricky right you would have to rely on the leaderboard in that case i'll dm philip after <laughs> after this live stream and ask him directly <laughs> that's a perk of being on the same team <laughs> okay um so uh, one more cool thing worth highlighting i did not see awp in this solution so this team or this person did not use that and they did not also experiment with external data which was cool to see um so this was one of the unique approaches if i may from the other ones uh I think this might be the last solution we might go through. So uh the title is predicting targets at once led them to gold. The inference notebook is public and six models were used in overview. The models were trained with BCE loss and just averaged with different weights as the ensemble. um nothing stands out we've already seen all of these models except this one so this is some variant of v3l uh v3l with mnli fever i don't know what this stands for but it it says token classification with awp was used in this approach um so it's also a mix of token classification and text classification as you can see uh the green ones are text classification and uh all of these models were simply averaged with different weights for the token classification approach uh they share how they share how this happens the tokens are fed inside the classification model which gives the scores from where you get a bc loss of which you take a mean across all of these predictions and this mean is back propagated to the model they say that the competition aims for estimating the similarity between word pairs there are multiple targets to compare with specific anchors so they assume that they could use three kinds of information semantic relativity between anchor and target semantic relativity between word pair and context and relativity between targets that are supposed to be compared with same anchor and target and i i assume they they also mentioned that they how they arrived at the trick later on inside this encoding uh or this is how the words are fed to the models you see tar and tr is a special token that they added for letting the model recognize the positions of each target tokens so before every target token they added tr doing this uh they say gave them a nice boost they also share the text uh classification model in this case you get a single bc loss and you back propagate that to the model the trick uh for them was they added a they used only attention output corresponding to the cls token and in their experiment this made the model learn faster and improve the score uh they talk about the cv strategy and also target shuffle augmentation we looked at this but i'll quickly mention it again so the the trick was shuffling these targets between each other 
they augmented this uh, to prevent the model from memorizing the train samples themselves. Uh, from here, they shared the AWP parameters. And they've also shared some hyperparameter tuning that was performed. For TTA, uh, they still shuffled the target positions for two times per anchor. And this was also key for them, I, I, I would assume. Ensembling for them was with a constrained least square method. So they say uh, they created 20 trained models and they had to optimize the weights for averaging ensemble. This meant uh, they must search with best weights in almost no time. In fact, they had just about 15 hours left before the deadline. So they used the constrained least square met, uh, method. And basically they're showing how they use linear regression across um, a data set of best uh, weights that they had come up with. And uh, they say SciPy allows you to do this very conveniently. So for them, increasing TTA did not work. Uh, using custom losses, we saw another team recently that had done this. Uh, for them, this did not work. MLM apparently did not work for any of the top teams. Uh, other augmentation, back translation, and swapping positions did not work. Adding special tokens for context. They had added tokens for targets, if you remember. For context, this was not helpful. And pseudo labeling for training data uh, did not help for this team. So that's the eighth place solution. Again, the cool thing for uh, this team was, again, we've seen this, but uh, shuffling the targets and then having a target um, token before adding the targets or concatenating them. So I've, uh, I have interviewed Tushant already. And uh, I would I would suggest that you can check out uh, the interview. It's the first link in the description. So I'll, for that reason, I'll, I'll skip this. I don't want to repeat uh, that again. Um, I think we can wrap up here. Uh, that's I don't remember anything that stood out from the 12th position uh, approach. For me, uh, this was really cool. So Alex, this might be worth your time. You can go through this one and this was the one I was looking for uh, all the explanations for EMEA and AWP. So again, the 12th, uh, if you just look up 12th place solution, this is where uh, they share the functions for how they ap applied all of these approaches and how they even calculated the losses. And there's a class EME, which gives you all the details. And I think there's a class for AWP as well, somewhere here. But uh, this approach was also quite similar to the other. So I think we can skip this. And um, yeah, I just wanted to do a speed run through all of these solutions. I think for next week, uh, we might do something uh, that's either related to tabular data for the current uh, GoDaddy competition or maybe the RSNA one. So <laughs> I'll announce it um, by Tuesday, uh, sometime by Tuesday probably. So again, keep an eye out for that. It'll e be either, I'll, I'll probably swap positions. The worst thing I'll do is like maybe tabular first and uh, image later or maybe image first or tabular later. So either of those competitions. And a few competitions are going to end soon. So we'll also probably understand the top solutions from there. Let me catch up on the chart. Rashmi says you can't calculate CV for full data. It's based on end fold. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to DM Philip and figure out how he does that. Yeah, Alex agrees with it. Cool. Um, awesome. Thanks. Thanks for joining everyone. Uh, I'll, I'll keep live streaming every Sunday until there are Kaggle competitions and there are plenty of them to learn from. So this series will keep going. Uh, there will be different topics. If those are of interest to you, keep an eye out. Uh, you're welcome to join any. Welcome to ask any questions. And uh, hopefully this was helpful for you all. I'll see you all next week. Thanks for joining.